Welcome to another edition of the In Search SEO Podcast, where we paint the town red with search marketing insights. Big shot with us today as Matt Giovannisi is here to help explore the wide world of SEO when building a new website. What technical and design considerations should be on your mind when creating a new site so that you rank well? How to take an abstract plan and turn it into concrete content and branding strategies for your site? And how to build links for a new site and rank for keywords when you're the newest site on the block. Plus, we explore BERT, Google's new and super advanced algorithm for understanding words like two, of, and for. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that, but you'll have to listen on. I am your host, Morty Oberstein. I am joined by the adroit, the ruminative, Sapir Carabello. Hello, Morty. Hello, <laughs> Sapir. How are you? Eh. Eh? Eh. <laughs> so so. <laughs> so so. No, I'm sorry. I, I have to be polite and say everything's great. No, no, you you can be true. No, I'm so so. Okay, explain. I'm not, oh, I'm not what explaining. Happened? Why? No, nope, not explaining. Okay, that's all you get is so so. <laughs> How are you? I don't really care. But oh, okay. yes, you do. <laughs> I was polite. I okay. don't really care. I'm polite. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm good. Not so so. No. Really? Yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> You're just saying that because you want to be polite. You can't say, you are not as honest with your feelings as to say, no, things are sucky right now. So you're just going to say, yeah, it's good. It's all good. Whatever you say, Morty. That's right. Whatever I say. <laughs> okay. Do not forget. We put out a new episode of the In Search SEO podcast each and every Tuesday. You can find it on SoundCloud. You can find it on Stitcher. You can find it on Spotify. And of course, you can find it on the Ring Ranger blog or... You may subscribe on iTunes. Um, okay, what to plug today? What to plug today? How about Rank Ranger's new and free Site Explorer? See the organic um, and web rankings for any site. Find any site's top organic and paid keywords. Get metrics like keyword difficulty. See what SERP features show for a site's keywords. And see who the top competitors for any site are, as well as the content overlap that exists between a site and its competitors. And it's free. Yay. It's free, free, free. It's free. <laughs> um, look for the Site Explorer on Rank Ranger's website. Just head over to the homepage, click on resources, and you should see it right there. If you don't, then you might have a eye problem. And it's, it's free. And it's free, free, yeah. free. <laughs> It's free. Thank you, Morty. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a great show for you today. Matt Giovannisi is here to talk about SEO for new sites. But first, we must talk about BERT because it's what's hot in SEO. Red Hots, get your Red Hots here. Now, BERT, in case you did not know, stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations for Transformers. Which just says to me, Transformers, Optimus Prime. That's all I hear when I, when I, when I hear that. Um, okay, BERT, that is Google's latest machine learning property, um, which has been hailed as the biggest thing to hit search in five years. I'm not making that up. Google said that. Okay. Yep. Um, now, uh, BERT, just to help you understand BERT, yeah. so we're making it very clear to understand BERT right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, BERT is a NLP pre-trainer that relies on a neural network to learn for the production of better outputs. Got that? Sure. Yep. No, not really. Not really? No. Kind of? Not even? <laughs> kind Nothing. Of. I don't Right. Okay. You know what? Fine. I don't <laughs> think anybody knows what the hell I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. So my entire purpose today um, is to help explain Bert. In Bert. A, Bert. I just like saying Bert. Bert. <laughs> sounds like burp. It sounds like, yeah. It, it sounds like something you say when you go to a NASCAR race. I'm going to go Bert. <laughs> my entire purpose today is to better explain what uh, Bert is in a way that makes sense to a fourth grader. Now, in case you're wondering, BERT is definitely homage to Sesame Street since there is a neural network model called Elmo. You want to hear? You ever hear me do Elmo? What? You want to hear me do Elmo? Okay. Elmo loves SEO. Listen, I've never watched a single episode. Of never that seen show. Sesame Street. No. Oh my god, Elmo so hates that. I have no idea who you're talking. You don't about. know who Elmo is? No. Seriously? No. Is that the show with like Miss Piggy and stuff? The, the Miss Piggy is a Muppet. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Muppets they are were all Muppets. <laughs> all Muppets, for the most part, were created by a man named Jim Henson. Okay, Jim Henson, yes, I believe, did create the Muppets for Sesame Street, which is why there's a crossover. Oh. Kermit the Frog is on Sesame Street, yet he's also a Muppet. 
I don't care. Oh, you've never seen Sesame Street? <laughs> no. B is for bubble. <laughs> B is for bubble. Oh my god. B is for bubble for Please bubble stop. gum. Please stop. Bert. 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 Okay. Wait, wait, wait. My, my 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 point with bringing this up was is that why, if Bert is related to Sesame Street, I mean Bert, not the character, Bert the 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 machine learning property. Why not call it Ernie? Because Ernie's clearly the superior Muppet. Okay. I'm just bringing. I'm, I'm, that's my biggest question for the day. <laughs> you should have gone with Ernie. Okay. Yeah. Let me get back to this then, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, um, how does Bert work, and how can I explain it without sounding like Doc Brown from Back to the Future? See, now that's a reference that I actually understood. The Libyans, okay. <laughs> here, here it is, okay. one sentence, okay? Mm-hmm. Bert. Hey, Bert. <laughs> can't help myself. Come on. Hey, Bert. Um, Bert is yeah. a context clue. Huh? What? Bert is a context clue. What is a context clue? <laughs> when I taught fourth grade, okay, <laughs> okay, we used to, we used to use context clues to learn new vocabulary, and that's what Bert does. Okay, did you know they actually allow me to teach children in the fourth grade? Oh my god, isn't poor, that nuts? Poor kids. I, I was like... I was like Socrates, <laughs> corrupting the youth. Oh no, I hope they turn out all right. Yeah, you can because of me, much I, better. I doubt it. But okay. Okay. Not true. <laughs> Not true. I was a great teacher. Okay. So, in case you haven't taken ELA, English Language Arts, in the fourth grade for for a long time, mm-hmm. context clues go something like this. You ready? Yeah. Here's a sentence for you. Okay. Okay. You try to figure out the word, okay? Okay. It's a word we don't know, and we're going to try to figure it out using context. You ready? Okay. Okay. I prepared this. Hold on. Let me pull it out of my notes. Okay. Paulie is a boozer. He drinks vodka for breakfast, pours whiskey in his coffee, has a beer or two or three with his lunch. And for dinner, drinks a pint of Jack Daniels. What is a boozer? Now, from the context, right, you know, okay, but from the context, you know that a boozer is someone Someone. who has a drinking problem, right? Right. Which is a word that a fourth grader, we would expect them not to know that. But they could figure it out using the context as a clue, context clues, Mm -hmm. to figure out what this unknown word means. That's nice. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, Bert does the same. It looks at the overall context of the language being used, and it uses it as a clue, much as our fourth graders did to figure out that Paulie has a drinking problem. (laughs) What a great example. What a great example. (laughs) Fourth graders. Paulie, by the way, is is my association to Paulie came out from Rocky, because Rocky has a character in the movie called Paulie. Rocky? Rocky Balboa. Who? Oh, my God. (laughs) And Paulie had a problem with drinking, so that's where I got that from. Anyway, okay. This model of looking at the entire phraseology and pulling out understanding from using the context that the word that you're not sure of rests in. I don't know if I said that right, but you know what I'm trying to say? That stands in contradistinction to other models, okay, that read content from left to right and then again from uh, right to left. And again, those models, they don't look at the entire phrase or the entire keyword in our case in, SE, in the SEO world, um, but they build understanding based upon the prior words in the phrase, right? So if this word's next to that word, this word goes off of this word, okay? And that gets really complicated, though, when you, st- when you think of a whole document, okay, you're going you're gonna to start relating, each sentence builds on other sentences, and the understanding of one sentence is related to the, uh, to the next sentence. Right. So if you're just looking at the word that came prior, your understanding of that as a machine learning property is very limited. But if you're looking at a much larger picture, much larger context, it's much easier to train that um, that machine learning property to understand what it's looking at. Right. Got it? Get it? I'm actually impressed. Good. You're a pretty good teacher. I'm a pretty good teacher. I was a very good teacher. I was a very I I miss teaching sometimes. Aww. Then I hear kids outside in the school and I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. By the way, that's where the B in Bert. Yeah, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop. stop. Yeah, Bert. Uh, that's where the B and Bert comes from, because B being bidirectional, left to right, then again from right to left, it looks mm. at the whole thing. Okay? Great. Okay. okay. To learn to do this, Bert was fed information. I think he used like Wikipedia as its backdrop, and trained to find content patterns. Okay? And then this, and this Bert was actually not a Google property. Hey, Gert was Bert. Gert, Bert, Bert, Gert. <laughs> Bert. Hey, Bert. It was an open source. I'm not, not going to stop. Bert was an open source project. Okay. Now, 
This is what we're referring to when BERT relies on a neural network model, and the process of this is called NLP, which I mentioned earlier, and that stands for Natural Language Processing, which is fancy talk for saying that BERT tries to understand language the way that people do. Okay, so to summarize, BERT has been trained to look at the full phraseology and has thorough training to be able to process um, understanding of, of, of content via context to predict what user intent really is. Makes sense. Yeah, for the mm -hmm. most part. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Now, where BERT really comes into the picture is two places. Prepositions, which is why in the intro to this very podcast episode, I said BERT is all about understanding two of and four. Mm. Okay. And okay. Bert helps to understand cases where one word or phrase has a double meaning. We used to call them in fourth grade multiple meaning words. There's a much fancier word for this, okay. and I don't remember it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but multiple meaning words. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole hierarchy of multiple meaning words because sometimes the meanings are closer together and sometimes they're, they're further away. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the examples, Google gave a whole bunch of examples. If you go to search engine land, you'll find them when they talk about BERT and total release. Or if you actually go to the Google release, Google gives a whole bunch of examples of what BERT does and how BERT does it, whatever it is. Mm. And if you look at the examples, you'll see very clearly that those are the two aspects of language that Google's focusing on with BERT, right? Multiple meaning words and prepositions. But just to put some teeth to this, Google said, particularly for longer, more conversational queries or searches where prepositions like for and to matter a lot to meaning, that's where BERT comes in. So Google actually said prepositions. I'm not making that up. Okay. Okay. So let me just give you a quick example of how this plays itself out a little bit. Okay. Okay, just to make this more concrete. Because that's okay. part of teaching. Maybe we go from abstract to concrete. We'll give you examples. You understand what I'm talking about. Got it. Well, okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and by the way, these are terrible examples. Because like, I had to think of examples on my own, like how this would actually work. So like, okay, if you're going to scream like, that's a terrible example. This is how Bert works. Okay, okay, I get it. Just a bad, it's just an example, so everyone chill out. Okay. All right. I feel like I have to say that <laughs> before I, because you know someone's in my eyes going to say, oh, this is how it works. It's just a bad example. Okay. Take it or leave it. I'm trying to offer you a general sense of how this works. Okay. Okay. So first one, let's take um, the phrase, I'm driving for the disabled. So the preposition there for is really confusing. I could mean a, I'm looking for a driver for disabled people persons right right mm -hmm. meaning it's like maybe i'm looking for um a driver to drive my grandfather around because he can't see right right or i could mean talking about how to drive or driving rules and regulations for disabled people so the how you understand for is really 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 important it can go both ways mm. so bert <laughs> uses a larger context where that phrase comes in or um, it learned how to understand that, that phrase from other prior training. Mm -hmm. It understands that you're usually going to mean driving for dis... Um, what, what was the phrase? I can't remember. I'm driving for the disabled. So, yeah. Where it probably refers to, you know, what special licenses you might need or, you know, some tactics you might need have to take into account or how to, how to drive if you are disabled, that sort of thing, as opposed to a driver for a disabled person. Okay, so the preposition is very confusing. Where the focus is, is helped by Bert. Okay? Interesting. Yes. Okay. The second example, like a double meaning example, would yeah. be like um, how to turn right. Do I mean how to correctly turn? Because I'm driving. Again, another driving example. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or do I mean how to make a right-hand turn? How to turn right. Mm. Mm, because right has multiple meanings. Right. 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 <laughs> I got you. Okay. So Google. Right. And there was a feature snippet in this one. Like I got a feature snippet for how to drive right. It understood that I really meant like how to correctly make a turn. And it gave me instructions on how to make a turn for left hand and right hand turns. Oh, interesting. And that's Bert. Oh, okay. Okay. So to sum it up again, Bert. Hey, Bert. Helps Google understand the emphasis created by prepositions and helps Google understand phraseology that has multiple meanings. And just like a fourth grader, Google uses context to help identify the true meaning. It's so simple. You made it sound it's super so simple. simple. So nice it's one, so not Marty. simple, but yeah, it's so simple. Nice. I try. Um, it's a reality about as simple as creating a new site that carefully considers SEO, which is why we have an expert who is an expert in creating new sites with an SEO perspective in mind. 
So let's jump into our interview with Matt Giovanisi. Cut one. Welcome to another In Search SEO podcast interview session. Sitting with me via the ether that is the internet is the founder of MoneyLab.co. He's the host of Money Lab's podcast, and he's the CEO of Swim University. Here is the one, the only Matt Giovanisi. Hey, thanks for having me. Did I get that name right? You nailed it, dude. God, thank God. Awesome. Okay, cool. So you're from Jersey, right? I'm from South Jersey. I tend to people I'm from Philadelphia because I was born there, and I'm like 20 minutes over the bridge. So all right, so I can't. People I, are like because when, when you say Jersey, you right. think North Jersey. Yeah, of course. You think Jersey Shore. I, I'm no, thinking I'm I from, need to make fun of that because I'm from New York. Right. Right. <laughs> I, I feel like South Jersey is. A, we wanted to secede from North Jersey a long time ago. It's it's a totally different. It's, you're from uh, the nice part of Jersey where there are trees. Yeah. yeah. Farm country. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you have a really, really interesting backstory to how you got into this whole web thing. Um, do you mind mm -hmm. sharing that? Yeah. So uh, I worked in a pool store when I was 13. And during that time, I kind of worked my way up in the in the pool industry. Uh, I was super young and just teaching adults how to take care of their pools. Uh, you know, no big deal. And then I, I was in a rock band and we needed a <laughs> website and we didn't have any money, so I ended up just teaching myself how to do HTML, CSS, you know, just general code stuff to build a website for our band. Um, and then my my boss, who I worked at the pool company, noticed I had built this website because I was checking it out on the work computers. And he he reprimanded me, but then also hired me <laughs> to do the website for the company. And then I ended up becoming a marketing um, director for the entire um, the entire business. And then from there, I had this idea to uh, marry my, you know, uh, I shouldn't say passion or interest. It's just what I did at the time, like pool care with my website design skills. And that became Swim University. And I, I started that in like 2004. I had that um, thought and bought the domain names, set up the website. I did everything by hand. It was all separate HT, dot HTML pages and was writing the content. I was never a good writer, didn't go to college. So like just really just not good at English um, <laughs> and just kind of barreled my way through kind of part time with it until it took about like six or seven years of of me just part time, like testing it and hitting it and doing black hat SEO for a long time, like unknowingly. Right. right. Of course. Of course. It was part of a part of a community. And they all thought, yeah, this is this is the way you do things. And then it was just like, you know, whatever, 2007, whenever um, Panda or Penguin hit, I was like, oh, we have to change our entire strategy. And I'm like, God. So <laughs> I basically, so yeah, I just kind of, it's been literally trial and error for like the last, I don't know, 15, 16 years. And a lot of times I follow advice from my fellow peers who do the same kind of work. And just for some reason, Swim University is just one of those niches or one of those sites that just like doesn't really match the other tactics you know right. it's, i always had to like kind of pave my own way so uh yeah so i just did that and now i mean uh, what it's uh, yeah 15 16 years of doing uh swim university and other projects along the way and, and and really just been an seo person since day one since 2004 and uh, learned everything basically through the internet and through books. I right. mean, I had SEO right. books back in the day, so uh, <laughs> I feel like those those don't exist anymore. They're, right? they're there. They're there are the classics, you know, like the art of okay. SEO, right? But right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, SEO for dummies, right? Two thousand one. Oh man, that's a real. That's probably got to be a real book. Yeah, yeah, for sure, it's a real book. If it's not, you should write it because people are still right. buying books. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. It's it's amazing how many people get into this and they're not a computer scientist. There's no like data background or computer background. It's just it, every time this happens, it amazes me. Yeah, it's not like I remember. I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't go to school for any of it. I just I actually picked up an HTML book and just read it and then had Notepad on my computer. Right. And then just barreled through until I, until something became a thing and then. When I started getting into SEO because I needed to start getting traffic, and, right. and this was really early, I remember we were part of this group. I, they're, not, they're not around anymore. And we were just being taught to like spin articles and um, you know just get backlinks. Like I actually got a goodie bag from easing articles <laughs> because I had – given them so much free content because I was just writing the same post over and over and over <laughs> again and sending them 
I, did, I had tons of backlinks and I was I was ranking getting traffic and then you know and then poof one the, yeah one of the uh Google animals shut me down and I was Oof. like oh and then that like again this whole <laughs> like they're one of the Google animals that is caught them. yeah one of the, they all like and then this whole group were like oh guess what we're not gonna write for the search engines anymore we're gonna write for human beings and I was like no <laughs> and then I and then I got into this like other world of um like uh if you uh think traffic was the name of the site it's now fizzle um and corbett Barr was was singing this praise of like just write epic shit right just 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 write and seo will kind of take care of itself on the, yeah, yeah. On the back end so I, I i took that approach for a very long time because i had the technical seo side kind right. of taken like i knew how to build a website i knew you know h1 h2 tags i knew how to like you know schema markup i knew all that stuff so i figured that was taken care of and then and now I just needed to write really big stuff. Right. And nowadays I sort of combine the two worlds. I take the writing epic stuff with a more scientific approach to SEO and using SEO as sort of like the backbone of the whole strategy. So you're like basically the perfect guy to speak to about starting a website from scratch and knowing what goes in technically and what goes in more holistically. Yes. I'm glad yes. you're here, man. Thank wow. You. How did that? Having oh, yeah. Thanks for coming on. Um, I so, um, I have a very wide audience, and I, I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. When you um, when you think about creating a new site, mm -hmm. what are you thinking about? What are you considering? What goes through your mind? Just generally speaking, sort of from an SEO perspective. From an SEO perspective, um, that's a good question because I, I think of a lot of other, other things. I, I've recently done this where I actually take a, a really good look at the brand uh, like the name, because okay. Swim University is, and I'll give you a, a, a case in point. So Swim University is really interesting because I get a lot of crap from people who are like, why didn't you call it Pool University? Like you could have really owned that keyword. <laughs> I love that. And okay. I, you know, and I said, well, well, first of all, like that's, that's old school thinking, but I understand, you know, why you would think that I'm like, but I also, that limits me to only ever talking about pools forever, yeah. right. you know, and, and I wanted my brand to just be water to, to, you know, just anything to do with water. And so that's why it was, that's why I called it swim university rather than pool university, which I think has a better flow, no pun intended. <laughs> and I really thought about that because I knew I was going to talk about hot tubs in the future. I knew that there would be like, it would maybe even expand into like backyard stuff or like, you know, swim spas are a thing and like lap pools are a thing. So there's like a, a wide range of things when it comes to swimming. And so I really thought about the, do the, the domain name and the actual brand itself. And then from there, if I'm starting a new site from scratch, I am the, the and as a web, this is coming from a website designer. I have done all the design things. I've done every single piece. My biggest concern now is, is speed. Okay. I am just a... Speed I'll, junkie? I don't want to... Huh? You're a speed junkie? Speed junkie. Thank you. I really just... Whenever I'm looking at a website and, and designing it, I'm thinking, I don't want to use images or, okay. or I'll figure out a design way to not use images. And if I'm going to use images, it's going to be SVGs, right? Because they're like super lightning fast. Right. Uh, I'm going to, you know, pick a really simple domain name. Doesn't really matter as long as it's like catchy and simple to remember and has a good brand feel to it. And I'm really just going to focus on the actual, like if I'm going to design it and I'm using WordPress, I'm going to, I, the first page I design is single.php. Okay. And yeah. And the reason I do that is because obviously people are going to see that page more often than your home page, right. more often than any other page. And I basically just try to make that page load as fast as humanly possible. Okay. And that's, and, and knowing that I'm going to have a ton of content on it, I'm going to have videos, I'm going to have graphics. I'm going to have, you know, all kinds of multimedia things as well as words. Like those things need to really load fast. And so I try to take a, uh, a very branded approach to the way it looks without using all the fancy like parallax scrolling, which I know is probably not a thing anymore, or like, you know, images that just, or just different videos that autoplay, like all the stuff that people are doing now. It's like, yeah, that stuff's really cool and it looks great. But it really doesn't help with page speed, which I think is one of the most important SEO factors today. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that I design mobile first. So oh, right. I, I design with the, with the screen shrunk yeah, yeah, down yeah. to like 380 pixels, I think I do. And then I build up from there. And then I, then I zoom out and see what it can do. And I've developed a, a, like a little personal theme of mine 
that I can reuse over and over again for different projects that I do. Um, and yeah, they're, it's super lightweight. And I, and, and even if I were to like, if, even if I didn't have any website design skills, I would look for WordPress themes or, and I would really stick to WordPress and not go on, um, something like Wix Squarespace because I, I don't know if they're doing it right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you know of any like Squarespace sites that rank? I don't, I don't know. I don't know without my head. Is that something I really pay attention to? You know what I mean? Or like a yeah. Wix site? Wix, Wix site? I, Wix I know has like problems. And I, and I okay. know, yeah. And I know they try to counteract that and they got in some major heat and hot water with the SO industry when they ran the Super Bowl ad. They said like basically uh, you can rank, yeah. They, I forgot the ad was basically it's like, yeah, we're like super SEO friendly. You rank number one using Wix. Yeah. And that, that didn't go over well. I find, that not yeah, I just, they're happy. I saw an article recently saying that, oh, no, Wix is great. And I've heard a lot of feedback saying Wix is not great. So I'm not going to take a position on that because I, right. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's like, it's not like, it's not like I want the control. It's just that I know that if I have the control, or at least I can hire somebody with that control, like we can focus more on the technical SEO parts, which I think are important, like making sure that the title yeah. is the only H1 tag on the page, right? making sure that our H2s and H3s are like designed the way we want them to look and our, what else do I look at? Uh, just our, our markup, any of our, like, you know, I use Yoast as a okay. uh, SEO plugin. Right. You, you and everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know there's other ones and I've, I've kind of had my eye open on them because ever since that Yoast issue, a couple. Right, right, right. Years. But was it really an issue or wasn't an issue in the end? It was a whole um, kerfuffle. Thankfully it didn't hurt me because I didn't have that box checked or what it was or whatever yeah, it was. Like I, I really didn't... forget exactly what it was. Yeah. It was something that would, I don't know, but yeah, I, I was looking at other ones just for page speed. Mostly. I, I don't think Yoast is really affecting anything because it's kind of all on page. Yeah. And yeah, just making sure things are fast. Like I use, I also use WP Rocket um, because I use WP Engine, which is has really good caching, but they don't work well with other caching plugins except, you know, WP Rocket. And that does lazy loading for images, which is great. It does lazy loading for videos, which is one of the best features in it. It has like heartbeat control. It has all of these like little tiny like database cleanup things that really help micro speed up your site. And then Cloudflare on top of all that. So you don't go AMP? No. Oh, why not? No. I'm curious. Yeah, because I think it's stupid. <laughs> uh, I think it's a. Re I think it's Google reversing the future of the internet, and what people are, and and to say that the reason that AMP exists is so that you can have a robust, you know, site that has a lot of loading time, but then create articles that load instantly on phones that are on 3G or edge network or whatever. Right. And I'm like, if you just design your first site to be that fast, then Right. What do you need? Like, what do you really need on your that's, website? That's, that's like, the, that's the issue. You don't really need. You don't need AMP to do what they want to do. You can just do it no. yourself. No. So my my pages load AMP fast. Right. You know. So it's it's not it's they're because they're super thin. They're just yep. HTML and CSS. There's I I I very I do my I, I I do my like damnedest to not have JavaScript on my web pages. Where it's a content site. It's not like it's not right. like there's any interactivity that really needs to happen. Even my pop-ups are all CSS pop-ups. Is that is that you think that's going to change, or your outlook is going to change with the evergreen Google bot, or with Google saying that you know the waves of uh, of of right, looking at a page or crawling a page and indexing are sort of going to become narrower and narrower as time goes on, or you don't really buy into it. Good question. I do. So I believe that Google is trying to look. They, they gave that whole mobile first indexing, right? Yep. That that happened. That happened. And it's still happening. It's still happening. And they're basically saying like, hey, look, if you're going to be a good website owner and you're going to make your website super fast, we're going to reward you for that. And then everyone else is going to pay the price. Everyone else is going to suffer. Right. And so it kind of like forced everybody's hand to go mobile first. And I think that that's what they're doing with AMP. They're, they're kind of like twisting everybody's arm to go like, you need to make your website faster. You need to make your websites faster. Here, you know what? Since you're not going to do it, we're going to provide a service called AMP. So we're going to own that shit. Right. And it's, it literally because it's cashed. Right? right. Yeah. Yep. So it's like, we'll do it for you. But then the people who are doing it themselves are being rewarded the same way that AMP is being rewarded. Now, I understand that AMP is a little bit more for news sites and yeah. less for authority sites because, yeah, you need to have like quick loading things. But and then obviously they want to own the content because they want to own that that top spot. They want to be able to serve that content up quickly. I think. The, my biggest theory about Google is Google is just 
smarter than everybody else and continually getting smarter at a faster rate than everybody else. Like if you looked at the, um, the AI stuff that they're, they have, they have an API for it, right? Uh, what's it called? The, I don't know. It's the, the text recognition stuff. Oh, I know you're they're, talking about. Yeah, yeah, I don't know the name. I know you're talking about that. Yeah, yeah, I can't re remember it, but basically they're trying to read, and I, I read this on your site. Did you really? Uh, yeah. Sweet. I read this, this article about how, um, and it, like this was last year. It was last year in August, actually, when, I don't know why I remember this so well, because it was such an important <laughs> article for me. Um, well, I'm flattered. It was, it was the article, and I, I don't know if you wrote it or not, but they were, they were talking about uh, when, when I forget what thing came out in October or in August, what update came out. Oh, the medic update. The medic update. Right, and it hurt personal finance sites. Yeah, and it yeah, hurt yeah, yeah, sites, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was and me. then there was this. There was this piece about how Google is profiling, profiling. your site. Yeah. Okay. That's one of my. Yeah. That's like one of my main talking points. Yeah. One hundred percent. That's yeah. what's happening. That just was like that's it. That's yep. what's happening. Right. Google is basically using machines as human beings to be like, I like this site. Yeah, this <laughs> site's pretty nice. You know, it's like it's like a it's like a guy just sitting there going like, yeah, it's a good site. I, I just saw a thing in, in the in the news. It was um, Danny Sullivan saying, you know, we don't we can't use machine learning to understand if content is accurate or not. And it's like when you ask, I don't know if you're a football fan or not, but so you not ask not really, but I get it. So you ask like Bill Belichick a question and he's like a, yeah. he's an NFL coach, he's gonna dodge your question. He's like, uh, yo, coach, why'd you do this? It's Monday, I don't care. Like leave me alone. Right. So right. It, you don't know, if you ask the right question, you're gonna get the wrong answer. The right question is not well, can you check accuracy? The question is, how do you know if what you're serving up is authoritative? So right. to answer, yeah, we can't machine learning doesn't know if it's accurate or not accurate because machine learning is not an expert in, I don't know, diabetes or cancer, whatever medical thing you're, you're talking about. But they right. have signals that tell them that if you want to talk about, say, cancer, that's how authoritative content should be structured. That's what it should look like. That's what it should sound like. And that's what it should be. And it's going to compare that to what you wrote. And they know. Right. Right. So it's just a, it's just amazing what's going on. Okay, I am going to get off track with that. No, I think no, but I think it's important too because I whenever whenever I start building a website, the one thing I think that really hurt me in the early stages of my website building background was backlink building. I got hit multiple times because I was building backlinks and I didn't even realize I was building backlinks to bad websites. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then after, you know, hanging out with Corbett and him sort of saying like, I don't even pay attention to that stuff. Right. And I was like, great. So I'm just going to write for the human beings. And then Google got smart enough to be like, Hey, this guy's writing for human beings. Human beings are the ones that use our search engine. Let's just serve up the stuff that they're actually, they like. And then they're doing that whole, um, like they know about the pogo sticking and they can look at all of these signals within their own ecosystem to say like, what is authoritative and what's not. And yeah. then obviously machine learning just accelerates that. But what like, my, my point of all that ranting <laughs> bring it, bring uh, it all is, back is basically like I don't focus on backlink building, nor yeah. when I start a new website, do I even consider it? Because to me, that is overwhelming. You should be spending, you know, and it was sort of like, uh, I forget this guy's name. Nope. His name is Derek Halpern. Okay. And uh -huh. he, he used to say that you should spend 20% on content and 80% on promoting. And I'm like, I believe that should be not only reversed, but almost like 100% yeah. <laughs> on content and why promote it? Like Google will find you. Yes. That's their job. And right. if you pay attention to all the SEO factors that they want, basically just make your website incredibly fast and readable and make right. it good for human beings to load up on their phones no matter where they are and have them be able to read it. Write really good, really in intense stuff by going. And, and one of the tactics that I use for doing um, research on a specific article is – I will just take that keyword that I'm trying to rank for. I will Google it in incognito mode if you have to and literally just open up like the top 20 like articles that seemed like they're good. And I just scan and look for the H2s and see what yeah. topics are they yeah. talking about. And I distill that into a, into an outline. And then I have to use personal judgment to be like, you know what, that, 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 out, that section is pointless or we can cover that in one sentence. It doesn't need to be a whole section. Uh, and then I distill it down and then just basically fill in the blocks, you know, fill in all those H2s and really get in depth, but then take one more swipe at it and edit it down even further because I want to be able to say more in less words because yeah. it's not about word count. It's about 
information. Huh. Google's trying to serve up information, yeah. yep. you know, relevancy. And if you can, if you can do like make a good article for human beings and a good article for Google, you're going to win SEO. And it's really like the technical side of things is only just going to like lubricate that. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, look, they're super smart. I told my cousin about this. I'm talking to Eli Schwartz about this. And he said like, you know, he sees the, uh, he lives in the, um, I know the name of the place, Silicon Valley. And they have yeah. the Google cars, right? <laughs> I've heard of that. Oh, yeah, yep. And he said that you know, the Google car can tell the self-driving car if a squirrel is about to, run to the street or if a squirrel's in front of it or if a human is in front of it okay right. so don't tell me they don't know good content <laughs> from bad content because right. like you're missing an h1 or you don't have enough links or all these things are great and they're important but essentially google's really freaking smart and yeah. all the all and i mean john Mueller just said it the other day like yeah h1s are good you should definitely you know make sure you, you optimize them or whatever whatever but it's not make or break no i think it's good to like set up the the framework when you're building a site. It's good to have those like best practices in place. Hundred percent. And 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 the big ones. You don't have to do all the tiny little ones, right? I do focus on you know, <laughs> I do alt image every single image yeah, on my website. Course. I'm I'm a psychopath about it. <laughs> um, I you know I do those things that you know, may not really help. You know I kind of stopped doing the whole uh, anchor text thing. You know right. it's mainly for. Now, what I do for Anchor Tax is basically go, hey, here is an article about blank. Like right. go, m making sure that when you click that, you know where you're about to go. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know? And uh, I, used, I used to think too, I used to think that uh, Google Analytics, they were taking that data and they were using that in their ranking algorithm. Right. And then I, I was told otherwise, and that made more sense to me. I was like, yeah, that accurate, that information can be completely inaccurate. If right. you install the code wrong, like why would they trust that? It's right. Stupid. I mean, I, I have a feeling that like things like bounce rate, like yeah. they they may not be using it as like a direct signal, but you have to imagine the indirect, like they're, they're indirectly, they know what's happening and they, and they understand the fact like, okay, you, people are heading this page and they're leaving right away. Well, it, they know that because you're pogo sticking, you're going back to right. the content. So you, they're right. Counting so you, they, time, they're right. They're counting that and they know that it'd be foolish for them not to be using that. Right. That's um, true. Because then it means you're not getting that information. Right. And that's why it's important to like, you know, not just have the site load fast. And that's obviously like, that's yeah, the first that's thing, a good, that's a right? Good one. right? And then, but it's also like getting to the friggin' point. Right. A lot of people go, Hey, this is a 12,000 word article. And they're like, you know, they're, they're just like bragging that they wrote this like friggin' book. So and I'm stupid. like, dude, forget it. So stupid. Forget it. It's like unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to hop back on something you said before when you said, when you were setting up your site, um, mm -hmm. You didn't want to call it pool.com or pooluniversity.com because you're thinking yeah. I'm going to write about hot tubs. I'm going to write about, you know, whatever other things relate to swimming or pools. And yeah. Why not? I can't think of anything on top of my head because right. I can't remember the last time I went swimming in a pool. But, um, you know, a lot of the time I feel like when people start thinking about a site, they're going to get going with the site. The first thing from an SEO perspective, they can think about is the domain name and then, you know, the site architecture and that sort of thing. But really, like you have to start thinking about what's my identity, um, what content do I want to write about? Because otherwise, I don't know what my identity is going to be. Or reverse, yeah. if I have yep. an identity, so then only X, Y, and Z makes sense for me to write about. Mm -hmm. How do you take that like rough idea? You were creating pooluniversity.com, and then you, I was assuming university.com. Sorry, yeah, 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 that's fair. I got it. Um, <laughs> you know, when you were thinking, you know, what am I going to write about? How am I going to write it? What do I want the site to be? How do you really take that like abstract idea, that rough idea, and turn into something really, really um, focus and really tangible so that you can actually create the site. Yep. I've done this four times in the last three years. Wow. So I figure, I think I have a very, and I just did this probably a month ago. And I feel like I have a very good grasp on how I would do it okay. uh, and how and I'll just give you the step-by-step. -step. So the step-by-step -step is obviously you need to think of a big brand, a big, big idea, big keyword, whatever. Maybe it's, uh, uh, I guess we'll use like, I don't know, just tech gear, right? I mean, a lot of people Sounds do tech good. gear. Um, just really big, just really big and audacious, right? And you start with your brand from there because, you know, yeah, you can be like, I'm the TV guy. I do TVs and, and I make a TV site. And it's like, great, but um, then you will always ever do TVs. And then maybe one day we're all on hologram pads and mm. no TVs ex exist anymore and where's your site? Yeah. I think long-term about all, all the businesses I build. I'm not trying to make short-term money. Um, you know, I'm not trying to do a site about Crocs when they were a big thing. You know, I'm doing sites about, you know, stuff that's going to be around for a little bit. 
And, and so and it doesn't necessarily mean you can't start with TV, you know, but you can call yourself instead of like TV guru, you, and that's a terrible name, but <laughs> instead of TV guru, you call yourself tech guru. And that way you start with TVs right. and people can just relate. Okay. Yeah. That, he's talking about tech. Got it. And, but then over time you could start talking about smartphones or something other, te- you know, you have room to grow. So that's the first thing is to figure out like what your big brand is, what your big niche is and brand it based on that. But then you have to start doing uh, the first thing that I do is keyword research. Okay. Right. That makes sense. Before I, before I buy a, a domain name, before I build a website, I, I go uh, to some sort of keyword research tool um, and just look to see if there are enough keywords that are things that I want to write about in the topic that I want to, you know, in the topic that I want that are going to be semi easy to rank for. And I don't mean that they don't have to be like, you know, low hanging fruit, quote unquote, right, right. They can just be, um, there just could be opportunity and you'll be surprised when you start to do this, that there actually is quite a bit of opportunity. And when I'm looking at something like keyword difficulty versus how many searches a month, I tend to just look at those two numbers and say, okay, if it's getting over a thousand searches a month, you know, and the keyword difficulty is less than like 50, 40, 20, like really just like below anything that's outrageous. I'm like, and there's a lot, and there's a hundred plus of those keywords. I'm like, okay, I got something going here because I can, this is a long-term play. So that's the first thing I do. And I just make a list of all those keywords and I, and I got it. And then I can start building my site with yeah. the, with the content first. Right. And just recognizing that like, okay, here's what I want to do with it. I want it to be like a really in-depth uh, review site of TVs at first, and then we'll move into smartphones or whatever. Uh, and this is just a hypothetical example, just to make it simple. And so you have all these keywords, you start to, re- you start to order them based on a priority. And so I just order them by like the highest amount of searches per month with the lowest keyword difficulty, pretty right, often. Makes sense. Right. And, and then I just start, you know, I get the site up. I, I can, you know, personally, I could build a site from scratch in less than, you know, six hours. That's amazing. Okay. <sighs> But that's been, I've done it yeah, yeah. seven hundred thousand times, right? <laughs> so like I used to do it for a living. So, but if I were just getting started, I would be setting up a WordPress site on something like WP Engine or or some sort of managed WordPress hosting that is that prioritizes speed. And I would get just a handful of plugins. Uh, Yoast is free. Right. You can get a redirection plugin in case you need that. You get WP Rocket for speed. Cloudflare, which is free for speed, and that's probably all I would start with. I mean, there's really not much on top of that. Like, I wouldn't have comments. They're just, I think they're dumb, and you have to pay attention. Like, this is time like wasted. Comments, yeah. Are, yeah. Are you a fan uh, of um, schema at the, at the start right away? Must have, must do, or? Yeah. I mean, why not? I right. mean, doesn't Yoast kind of takes care of a lot of it? That's and true. If you set up, if you set up most of it, you'll be all right. And I, but you know what? Not really. <laughs> like, yes and no. Like, it is one of those things that why not? Just like it takes you, if it takes you a little bit of time to do, or if you have to install another plugin to do it, or, you know, and obviously if you're going to hire a designer to do a theme for you, you might want to incorporate those things into your theme rather than use a plugin, which is cool. Um, if you can get somebody to do that for you, or if you want to do it yourself, but yeah, just, I, I would say, you know, I'm mostly focused on getting a website up, getting it fast and just taking care of the big pieces. Like making sure your title's an H1, making sure that you can, you know, Google can read your description and your, and your title and um, making sure that those are optimized, making sure that you have, you know, legibility, making sure it's mobile friendly um, when you can, yeah. you know, you know, just, just like big, really big chunks of, of technical SEO and getting those done. And then obviously over time you can start to micro, right. you know, as you start to rank for things or not rank for things, maybe that's a factor. You can use some sort of site audit tool to just check your website and just keep, you know, I, all of this, when I talk about building a website, I, I try, and this is something I learned way later in life, and this is only something you can learn way later in life, which is like, you're not going to do it in the first week, right? You have to get up something very quick. You have to start writing content almost day one if yeah. you can do it, because that's otherwise, there's nothing at that point, right? Just because you built a website doesn't mean you have a website. <laughs> and so you start to get the content out there, get indexed get indexed like asap right? right get people you know that because that way if you start to rank people will start to backlink to you automatically right because people who 
rank in the first top three positions of Google tend to get just natural backlinks yeah. all the time, yep. right? And so you, that's the fact, like I would just get to that point as fast as humanly possible. And then from there, you have to be on a consistent non-burnout schedule of publishing at yeah. least once a week. That's what I did for, we had a site called uh, Roasty Coffee that I sold. And that the idea there was to just like get the site up like in one day and then just, I hired a writer and I had a list of a hundred keywords and just every Monday we just published a new article. And within two years, we were getting a hundred thousand unique visitors a month. Where did you start with that when you started writing? Cause that's a funny thing because you don't have any authority. You don't have any linking juice. And, and yeah. the things that you want to rank for, you probably can't rank for. So where do you start? I don't think that's true. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm up to a so, challenge. Yeah. So I've done this twice in the last three years. And I think it's more recent. This wasn't a thing, obviously, in the past. But I started a website called Brew Cabin. I had no backlinks. I wrote, you just, you know, you, I did the keyword research. I had the list. And... You know, I prioritized that list and then I started, we, I hired a team. I had a team of writers at this point before I would just do it myself. Yeah. Um, but now I have the capability of hiring uh, good writers and we just wrote one article every Monday, published it every Monday. And it took about six months of doing zero promotion, just, Got it. Literally just putting it out there. That's interesting. Okay. And, and all of a sudden I'm number one for a big keyword. There you go. Okay. So, I mean, How matter of time, happen? matter of content, over time, it just sort of all builds up. I think Google has gotten so much better at finding, you know, things. And obviously, I did a lot of, like, I made Google very aware I existed. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you know, you use Yoast, you have the XML files or the site maps, you, you, you know, you, you set up, you give them what they want. Right. Right. They want, you know, they want to, you want to be in search console. You want to be using yeah, Google they, they, Listen, they don't want to have to spend so many resources just finding your site and crawling your site and then indexing no. it it's to make it easy give for them. them. Yeah. Make yeah. it easy for them. Let, less then, money from them. Right? Less money for them. Less resources for them. Right. And they're yeah. going to crawl your site. They're going to use their AI technology. They're going to scan it. They're going to profile your site. And they're going to be like, wow, this site's really good. Yeah. You know what? It's actually a bit better than a lot of the things that we have ranking for this thing. You, it, it, it takes time. And it's getting faster. I yeah. noticed, like, okay, that's interesting. And then, and then once you start to get any traction, then it just starts to compound on itself. So that, where, yeah, that's for sure. That's like for I sure. Have, like some university now, if we write a new article on a new topic, which we, you know, we really try to keep our, the way that I view some university and the way that I view all of the sites that I own, I don't view them as like news content site forever. I will be publishing. I consider them giant tech textbooks on the topic right so swim university is a giant updatable live textbook all about pool and hot tub care <laughs> right so if we want to rank for a new keyword that just like we know we do research every once in a while probably once a year we'll do like a big research thing and see if there's any new things that popped up or things that like oh people are now searching for this right who knew right well we might already have an article that's very related and instead of us creating a brand new article that may only be 500 words because the topic is so small but gets a lot of searches, we may go back into an older article that already has juice and add an entire section with those keywords in it. All of a sudden, now that post ranks for that other new keyword. There you go. You know? And so we do this constantly. And we look at Swim University as an ever-evolving series of like chapters in a textbook. And once in, you know, brew cabin or, or like roasty or any of the other sites that I've created, it's all been with that in mind where it's like, eventually this site is going to be quote unquote, like a complete site. And then it will just be a matter of like, we'll update a post every once in a while or once every week, or we'll add a new article when the keyword appears. But otherwise, like, I mean, if you're running um, a site where you're doing like reviews, obviously there's new products all the yeah. time. You'll come you have to do that but then sometimes those products don't exist and your job should be to go back and delete those or update those to the new one that's cool because those pages exist they have value every page is it has value to it and so if and so that's the the way i tend to look at something which feels more like i'm building a big ass product <laughs> rather than a magazine that i will continually have like it'll just pile up in my closet yeah and just constantly no, it's good because it gives you a real core, a real, like a real identity, a real sense of like um, I, I hate to use the word structure, but a real sense of like, okay, this is what my site yeah. is, and it has a real um, 
real focus to it. Right. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's kind of like it. Yeah. And, and that's, I really think about site structure a lot because I try to simplify it. I'm like, if I can have four navigation, you know, links at the top, that's all I want. Okay. And I try not to do too many more. If I have to do more, I'll throw them in the footer or something like, you know, on a lot of our pages, like our about page is probably in the footer because it's like at a certain point we have four yeah. main categories for our website and then the about page becomes secondary. About Got it. But until then, like on, on a brand new site, I have, no navigation bar because why if it's all right it's all there it's all there so so brew cabin for the longest time um had just an index page so the the landing page with all the articles just listed in a grid right on the home page with a with a subscribe box and then that was it and then the single.php page so really keeping it simple really keeping the navigation simple yeah, yeah, because you can't because instead of sitting there and spending a week or two building out what you think the stri- site structure is going to be for the rest of time, you're building it as you need it, right? And and so and obviously if you're going to be paying a developer, that's going to cost you way less money up front yeah. than it would be down the road, that's right? Smart. So that's really smart. Yeah, so I and I do that even for my own stuff. Like I you know, I'm like why am I going to spend 2 weeks building out this like massive like site structure and yet we don't even have any content to fill in the, you know, in these category pages. That's so stupid. So yeah. I don't build those things until I'm like, okay, well we have, you know, 50 articles and we really need to start splitting this up or now we need a search bar. You know, it's like now, you know, the, and that took, so university has gone from like, I was the one of the people early on because I was very gung ho. I was new to the industry where I would, you know, I wanted the big site day one. So I spent most of my time building a site with zero content. There you go. And then, and then it was like, well, I just wasted a you know a month or two. No, just I mean, doing... there, there's so many sites like that where you show up. There's not a lot of con- and the navigation is so complicated and layered and complex for for what? Yeah, and especially because everyone look, everyone's reading your shit on mobile. Yeah, just just, okay. just accept that as a as as truth. Because I can tell you, like, and, and I've gotten uh, people in my industry, the pool industry, w- couldn't believe me. I go, I go, 80% of my traffic is on a mobile device. They're like, impossible. I'm like, well, how? That's not impossible. All you old people are all on right. friggin' iPads. <laughs> Which, what, or a desktop, right? Which, but nowadays, like, you just have a, an iPad. And they're all going out to their pools with the iPad reading yeah. the article trying to figure out how to fix their filter. Or their iPhones or their whatever. So just assume that 100% of your visitors are on a mobile device. And so therefore, like, you don't need a sidebar, right? right? You don't. Right. And, and, you, and you don't need, like, all of these things that you think you need, you really don't. What do you think, though, of people throwing, like, um, I've seen like, people throw hamburger menus on their desktop site now. Yeah. All that sort of I mobile think- feel to a desktop site. Does that work? Not work? Don't care? If you're on mobile anyway, you don't care? So I... Don't put hamburgers on my sites because. Thank you. Um, huh? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so one, uh, now you have to add JavaScript. Which right. Okay. I'm not against. I'm not against JavaScript as a language or for a website. I'm not against it. Um, you know, I have software. We use JavaScript. We need it. Um, but it is not something you need for a site where you're doing news or you're, you're just reading words or watching videos you don't right. need an right. extra like animation. So what I do is, um, one, I, I, again, this is all about mobile. So if you're on your phone, do you really want something following you on the page while you're scrolling with your thumb? No. Okay. So then the, at that case, the navigation can live at the top and it doesn't have to be sticky to right. follow you right. because where are you like where else are you going to go you're right. reading the article like right. when you're done reading the article just have links up. or have, or have links to other content there that's you relevant right. on your site like right so but i did this for the longest time right and then it was like okay well now everyone understands that the hamburger means navigation menu right okay but if you just scroll up to the top and you are like me and you limit your navigation to four words right four categories well, those actually can fit relatively small in the bar, so you can actually read them without clicking anything. So go. if you go to any of my websites, there's no there's no hamburger. It's just there. It's the, the, the navigation is just there. <laughs> and it doesn't take up a lot of real estate. We I designed it so that it doesn't take right. up a lot of real estate. And so 
And as you're reading the post, you're reading a post. Like you're just reading it. Yeah. And you're, and it's, it's, the words are big. The, 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 the videos are responsive. Uh, the images are responsive. And when you get to the bottom, there's a recommended reading section to keep going and, right. and send you to the rabbit hole, lower that bounce rate. And then, you know, if you want, if you really want to go to a different category, you can, you know where to go. It's exactly. First of all, it's really, it's a matter of like flicking your thumb. That, that's all yeah. it is. Everyone knows it. And here's the thing. I think a lot of it is driven by ego because I was certainly one of those people who was like, I wanted the coolest site with the with the dopest animation, the best design. <laughs> right. Like I wanted all of those things because I am a designer and I wanted top of the line everything. And so when I kept doing that, I kept pushing the site to be like cool. And the problem is, is when you start to do that, you perhaps sacrifice page speed or usability. Because yeah, cool hamburger. We all get what the hamburger is. But I can tell you that like, that's kind of not, that's going away. Yeah. Right. And and we the fact that we call it a hamburger is silly to begin with. <laughs> it's true. It's you true. know. And 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 then imagine like, look, I'm not saying that that this is always true, but in my case, a lot of I, and I, I I'm not going to qualify it by saying a lot of. I'll just say there are some people in my audience who are widows because their husband passes away, they own a swimming pool, they don't know what to do, what to do, they get on the internet and they email me. Okay. Right? They don't know what a hamburger is. Exactly. Right? Exactly. No, it's so true. I'm trying I'm trying to accommodate everyone. That's I'm not great, trying to be That's a great point, but I like, know your audience. If your audience is a little bit older, hamburger's not gonna work. My my yeah, father will have gonna... no idea what to do with that. Zero. Right. Zero. So I just yeah, and again, I'm I it adds a little bit of JavaScript to the page, which you have to manage, and then if you do a lot of like um you know, compression with minifying, like that could screw things up. And then if you're not a designer or JavaScript expert, you don't know how to fix it. You're gonna be like, ah, why is it not working on Android or whatever? Right. Okay. So I have one question that I'm itching to ask. And then we have to do a little game with you. Domain names. We haven't we sort of spoke about it a little bit here and there. You pick a domain name, you think you like it, and then it sucks. A, okay. a, it's a year later, let's say, or six months later, and it doesn't work for you. It doesn't make any sense. You look back like, what the hell was I thinking? Are you yeah. stuck forever now? No. Okay, why not? How do you do it? Well, so again, Google's smarter than us and everybody. So uh, I've done, I've moved content from site to site, from domain to domain, and I've not lost ranking by doing that. You just well canonicalized it all or redirected it? Redirected it. Yeah. That's it. And so... Yeah, what I would do in that case is just basically change the domain name in WordPress and you'll be fine. Okay. Because um, you may have to do some redirection in like your, um, what is it, the uh, the registrar, right? To right. just make sure that like anybody who's going to like, you know, techguru.com slash TV is going to go to like not techguru.com slash TV. Like you want to make sure that, that that's, that still follows through. Right. And then over and let that and set, keep that set up for a couple of months to make sure that all, everything's been indexed and you'll know from, yeah. you know, going into Google search console or just Googling your own content. And once that's all done, you can shut it off. Cool. But remember that if you've gotten a bunch of backlinks from other places, like you may want to set that up for a long time. Yeah. And the way that I do that is because swim university has always been swim university.com, but We've had swimuniversity.com slash category slash whatever. We yeah. had super long URLs. Like I've changed URLs in Swim University. I couldn't tell you how many times. And what we do is that's why I bought Yoast Premium because you can hook it up to Search Console and Search Console is going to send you all the 404 pages that you know it's finding. And then we just have the built-in redirection there where you it's go. like, nope, redirect us to the new thing. Right. And so I think that, yeah, you're fine. Cool. Okay. Good to know. All right, that's so my, that's my opinion. I mean, I've, no. done, it, I've done it before. Is I've it, done it before. It worked. So if it worked, then it, then it's it great. Works. If it doesn't work, right. then it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be scared of it. Okay. I mean, I, it, it sounds frightening. It sounds like the, <laughs> the worst thing possible. Yeah. When I mean, you're starting a new site. Um, all right, so I have this little gimmick that I do, a little game that I do with my guests. I call it optimize it or disavow it. So if you're a new listener, it's basically where I give you two options, either two really good options, and you're stuck. Because it's a zero-sum world, choosing between one good option versus another good option. Or I give you two really bad options, and you're stuck 
having to choose a really crappy option, which inherently sucks. So, if you're willing to play with us, this is the Matt Giovannisi version of Optimize It or Disavow It. All right, so for you, and I know the answer, Renee, you, you, I, I shot myself in the foot with all the mobile talk. Right, so let's say you're, I'm going to ask it anyway. Right, let's okay. say you're building a commerce site in particular. I'm asking about commerce because uh, commerce is one of those things where, yes, we're, we live in a mobile world, but commerce is like the one thing where I will go back to my desktop site because I don't want to pull out the credit card. It just I want to be able to see. And so you're building a commerce site, and you have the choice between focusing on the, the desktop version at the expense of your mobile site. Or you can focus on the mobile version at the expense of your desktop site. What do you do? I, I have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. That's the whole game. Oh my god. Um, do you want to? Uh, you want like a? You want a drink of whiskey or something just to, <laughs> to mellow out for a second? <laughs> yeah, no, I can offer can you I, narcotics, but I can't offer yeah. it on the on the podcast. Uh, we, have, we, have, uh, we have marijuana here in, in Colorado. Okay. Um, oh, you're in Colorado. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. That's great. Yeah, Good. we moved out here. Is that why you moved uh, out there? Huh? Is that why he moved out there? No, no I moved I'm out joking. here for, for snowboarding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but I have I have family members who've moved out here for it, so it's not 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 that far off. Fair enough. Um I'm gonna say, man, I that's so only because I am the type of person who well, you know what? Here it is. Okay. I'll tell you what it is. It's it's mobile. Okay. Because the because the reason that I go to my desktop is because I first looked at it on a mobile site. And it sucked so bad that I had to go do it on my desktop because I felt safer. If you really focused on the mobile side of things, I think you're going to make a lot more sales. Okay. I mean, you think you can get past that that barrier and that blockade if I don't want to pull the credit card out on my mobile site if the site's good enough. Well, you're probably not pulling out the credit card. You're probably using something like Apple Pay or you have That's it already true. into Google. That's true. So, like, for, for example, like, I buy movie tickets on Fandango's app. I buy Amazon products on Amazon's app. I very right. rarely buy Amazon products on Amazon.com, like, on my desktop. I go to the app. Right. Right? Right. So if you could just make the – like, make your web experience work as good as the Amazon app, then I think you're good to go. You, you're a true believer in mobile. Man, I really, I, I, yep. People are on their mobile device more than they're on a computer. And if they're on their computer, they're probably doing work. People are on their mobile device more than they're with their family and kids. That's so. true, too. That's very true. Or maybe because of their family and kids. Who knows? Yes. Right. So, uh, so I say optimize? Is that the? Yeah, optimize it. Optimize mobile. Right, yeah. yeah right. Right. Go for it. Optimize mobile. Cool. Yes. <laughs> All right, Matt. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate this. It was fantastically awesome and hope to have you again. Yeah, this is super fun. I'm happy to come back on. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks. And we are back to your regularly scheduled In Search SEO podcast. Okay, so even though it's my duty as a native New Yorker to hate all things Jersey, that's a rule. Okay, if you're, <laughs> and if you're not from Staten Island in New York, you also hate Staten Island. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why that is, but I, I hate Staten Island. Oh, you don't remember Staten Island. You're so hateful. It's not from New York. It's from, what do you mean? <laughs> it's just like. You know how to ask for directions in New York, right? No. Is this way the Fifth Avenue or should I go to hell? Oh, wow. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's from Jersey, I really enjoyed ta talking to Matt. Vibrant, knowledgeable, always a good combination. So hopefully we'll have him on again because that was really insightful. Mm -hmm. um, on to oh, – oh, we're back. We're back to the news. We didn't do the news last episode. Oh, and we're back to the news. I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm so excited for this. I couldn't sleep at night. Really? Because we didn't do the news mm. last time because we had a whole <laughs> scheduling kerfuffle. I know. And now we're going to do the news. Yeah. Awesome. Woohoo. Uh -huh. So exciting. Yeah. Okay. So, Sapir, could you please hit it with the news? Bing says it will now be penalizing inorganic site structure. PBNs, doorway content, etc. And ironically, um, subdomain leasing, a problem discussed on this very podcast, I don't know, a month, two months ago, is part of that. And I said back then on this podcast mm -hmm. that that would be a problem where that's going to get you penalized. And I was wrong because it's not Google who's penalizing you, it's Bing. Mm. So big up yourself, Bing, for getting it right. And Google, I don't know why... You wouldn't be penalizing for this because, as we spoke about on our podcast episode, which I'll link to into the uh, podcast, 
the podcast, <laughs> the blog post for this podcast, also nice known one. as a podcast. I'm coining that. It's yeah, a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you can hear me talk about that and why I think Google should penalize you. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's move on. Onwards. The Search Console site speed report is now publicly available. Here you can see how many of your pages are fast, moderately fast, and just plain old slow. Right, and be careful. You got to switch over to mobile first indexing. Uh, you want to check that out to make mm -hmm. sure your pages are super fast. Right. Okay, lastly, Google recently held its Webmaster Conference. One takeaway per bearish words is that Google seems ready to continue its focus on structured data. Yeah, structured data is case big. I have a whole theory as to um, as to why Google keeps doubling down on, on, on structured data for rich results. Okay. Which I will not share now. Oh, no. No, geez. <laughs> I will do a Such blog a post on tease. it. Okay. I don't know when because okay. I have like five things ahead of it. But at some point, <laughs> I want to do a blog post on why. No, because it's true because Google sort of redoubled down on like it's like – Structured data has always been important. Yes, yes, I know. But recently, I don't know, two, three, four, five, six months ago, there's been this like renewed double down focus on structured data. And why is that? And I have a theory, which I'll share in the blog post. Okay. On Looking the Rank Ranger blog. Looking for. You can go to rankranger.com slash yeah. blog. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the news. You're welcome. That was great. Yeah. Glad to have that back. Me too. Really, really ties the podcast Thrilled. together. Yeah. It's like that rug that really ties the room together. <laughs> right. Hey, dude, that really that rug tie the room together. <laughs> to quote the Big Lebowski. I don't know who that is. It's what that is because it's a movie. But okay, ah, moving okay. on. <laughs> Just in case you weren't having enough fun already. Fun, fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. It's time for the fun SEO send off question. <laughs> So, okay, yeah. I have a question. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's a brilliant question. It's a brilliant, it is a brilliant question. It is, but I have no answer for it. <laughs> I also had a very hard time with the answer for this. <laughs> it's a good question, but you just, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's so sometimes. It's troublesome to, you know, come up with an answer, I think. Let's, 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 okay, let's um, ask the question first. So, if Google were a country, what would be the first line of its national anthem? Mm. That's mm. a good question. I, I like know. that you didn't go, what would the title be? What would the first line be? Yeah. You know. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it is. Wait, I didn't think of that. that. I should have asked what the title would be. I <laughs> yeah. thought that was on purpose. <laughs> no, that was just an oversight. Okay. No, I'm just like, oh, I should have oh, done man. that. Oh, <laughs> man. I should have done that. Either way, I, I like this one better. Mm. Harder to answer, though. Right. That's why I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> son of a gun. You did this last time, too. I know. I and they're both your that. questions. I know. <laughs> that's like mean just like okay just just know that whenever you ask me to come up with a question right it's just i just cannot come up with an answer to it as well so just like don't <sighs> expect it you know okay but I, mean? I i i resent the fact that my laziness to come up with asking <laughs> the question and putting it on you comes back with laziness on your part to actually answer it. exactly so know that for you know the future. laziness should not be answered with laziness <laughs> eye for an eye eye for an eye mm -hmm. okay uh, okay, so I, I, I had an answer. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> but I had an answer because I thought I had to have something for the podcast, unlike some people who <laughs> just let the podcast go to crap, but okay. I wrote, uh, Yeah. God save the Google. We mean it, man. <laughs> to quote the Sex Pistols. Oh, okay. One of my um, favorite lines of any song ever, because like the way he says it, you know what I'm talking about? You heard of the Sex Pistols? I heard of them, but I've never heard of them. Awesome music, punk rock so. band. One of the first punk rock bands to have a song called God Save the Queen. Oh. It's not like a good song. If you're English and you're listening to this and you like the Queen, close your ears. Oh, wow. It's like it's like anti the Queen, anti establishment. They're punk. They're for the Queen. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so the line goes like, God save the Queen. Mm -hmm. And he goes, We mean it, man. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay. Whatever. So that's my line God save the Google. Hey, that was okay. Not your worst. Not my best. Not, not, not my best. worst. But at least I had something. You have no right to comment. I had the question, so, you know, you have no right to criticize me for not having the answer. It's frustrating. Yes. Well, with that, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the In Search SEO Podcast. We will be back again next Tuesday with an all-new episode, so keep an eye out, keep an ear out, and don't forget, it's been In Search because we're all in search of something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.